Hello, uh, my name is Slave Brock. I'm a board member of the Danish People's Movement Against the EU, and I'm also Master of Political Science. And I've been active with peace and security matters for a few decades, especially in the Danish UN Association. Denmark will have a referendum on uh, EU military and the Danish opt-out on defense the 1st of June this year. So from now it's like two weeks. Um, we have had a lot of um, pressure, you can say, that uh, the EU positive side in Denmark is using a huge scaremongering campaign. Uh, Denmark is the only country in the European Union that has an opt-out from the EU militarization. I'm not sure how many people in Europe knows about the EU militarization, but the EU is building up institutions, EU is supporting supporting the armament industry, uh, EU is uh, having battle groups uh, uh, and EU's target in the uh, Treaty of Lisbon is an ever closer union that is also on the defense area and the, the target specifically on defense is a common defense. Uh, the EU Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who was a former Minister of Defense in Germany, she has openly said that, that uh, she not only thinks that you will get an army, but that you is also building up an army. It was in the German magazine Handelsblatt uh, some time ago when she was minister in Germany. But uh, we know that both the French and the German governments wants an EU army. Uh, we know that uh, Germany, France and Italy wants a supranational defense policy. That means that the countries do not anymore have um, a veto power in this area. For Denmark, this is a very important question because uh, our population and our government is not the same thing. This is also very different between European countries. But in Scandinavia and Switzerland, we have more direct democracy than we have see in some other European countries. And that's why we are the only country in Europe uh, or in European Union that will have uh, a referendum specifically on this issue. Um, in Denmark, we have many good arguments to keep the opt-out. Uh, one of the most important is, of course, our democracy um, and, and that we keep the power over defense policy as close to the people as possible. In a time like this with the war in Ukraine, it is even more important that we do not do very fast things without um, thinking about the consequences for the future. In the European Union, no elected politicians can make law proposals. The European Union is not built up in a very democratic way. And if the member states hand over power over defense policy to institutions that are not democratically uh, open and uh, has transparency and so on, it will be very difficult. And we already see problems in this area, in other areas, political areas, but uh, defense policy is a very important thing. And in the, in the Danish People's Movement, we believe the power over justice policy uh, and over defense policy has to be uh, a question where, where citizens can can decide. And if we have a government that did something wrong, we can choose a new government when there comes a new election. But if we hand the powers to the EU institutions, there is a risk on the democratic area. And we already now see that the EU Defense Agency, which is already built up together with the EU uh, Defense Fund, are transferring money to the weapon industry. And that's a weapon industry that sells armament to countries that constantly violate human rights. Uh, it is proven now that Russia even have bought weapons from European Union until at least 2020, after they, the, the uh, attack on Crimea. Uh, France sold weapons for uh, most of those weapons for 1.5 billion Danish kroner and Germany 900 billion Danish kroner and so on. And some of these companies which have sold weapons to Russia, they got taxpayers' money uh, from the European Union. And this is not even debated in, in, in the EU. 
uh, Thales, which is a French German company. It is even proven now that Ukrainians are being killed by weapons produced in European Union. And some of these companies are getting taxpayers' monies from European citizens. And I am sure that citizens around Europe do not want their tax money to go to these armament companies. There is a European network against arms trade called ENET. They have made a pamphlets about uh, this question. And there you can read more about uh, the whole armament industry and the European Union, how it's connected and how European Union is actually uh, supporting a weapon industry that has a lot of money. And this weapon industry do does not need more resources from, from our nations. So seen from a Danish perspective, I, I would say that there are three things that is very important in, in our referendum. One is the protection of Denmark. And of course, the, the EU pro side that wants to get rid of the opt-out, they, they say we are threatened. And we see posters all over the country saying that um, in unsafe times, we must stand together and all these kind of things. So they use uh, the fear to try to, to say to the population to hand over uh, power over defense policy. But we are already members of NATO and, and uh, we are not threatened as such. Uh, so the threat is, is used by politicians without real content. Then there is the question of visions. Uh, Denmark should not only be a country that does what bigger countries was, want us to do, we should be a country that tries to work for peace and that tries to negotiate peace. And in Oslo, for instance, Norway, which is also a NATO country, but outside the EU, they have a whole division in Oslo foreign ministry that works with peace questions. And if Denmark keeps the power over defense and security policy, we have better uh, possibilities to work for peace around the world. And if you ask, ask Norwegian governments and experts in peace, how come Norway can play a bigger role in peace questions? Then they would say, because we are more free towards European Union, we are not member. And Denmark has not handed over this area to European Union. So this gives us uh, better possibilities for um, working for peace. The third area I want to mention is international law. There is not written anywhere in the EU treaty that EU can only make military operations out of area if there is a UN mandate. When Finland joined the EU battle groups, there was a discussion in the Finnish parliament and Finland decided to take away national legislation that was binding the Finnish parliament only to use military force in case of defense and in case of the UN mandate. Finland took this uh, national legislation away with the argumentation that there could happen situations where European Union will make out of area operations without a UN mandate. And this, I think, is very, very central for us. Denmark and other countries should support international law. It should be a very strong foundation for our nations that we will never go to war. Uh, and if we use military, uh, force. It has to be with the UN mandate. It has to be for peace. And we can see that countries like France, they still have very strong economic interests. For instance, in Africa, France still have a foreign legion. France made nuclear tests some decades ago in Pacific, but they still have uh, nuclear power and so on. And the interest of France seen in many conflicts is not always the interest of peace. Um, I'm working very strongly with Western Sahara questions and I can see the way France is using their power in the Security Council is not to make it easier for the UN to work for peace in Western Sahara. France is blocking for the UN soldiers to monitor human rights in Western Sahara. So if we want European countries, and now it's specifically Denmark, to be able to make a difference for international law and for visions about peace negotiations, we must go another way. And the Danish population has the power in their hands the 1st of June to say no 
to giving in on the EU defense uh, area. So I hope, and I work for the Danish population to vote no. And if other people around Europe thinks it's a good idea to, for Denmark to say no to the EU militarization, then please uh, give us uh, a little short video or give us some remarks, write to Danish newspapers. You can also support the people's movement in our campaign. The last two weeks will be the most important time for us um, and we are the only country voting on this. I know that other Europeans also are critical to, to the development of the EU in this military area. And we need a debate across countries in Europe. What is actually going on here? Why are countries speaking about an EU army? Why is, why is this development going on? Um, we do not need the European Union to be a military union. So I'm grateful that I had the chance to speak here and I hope that other Europeans will show solidarity with us in Denmark so we can stand outside the militarization process of the European Union. Thank you so much.